Yeah, the SID Display Week here with Novacentrix, and who are you? I'm Ian Rawson from Novacentrix, and I'm an a applications engineer. So basically what I do is find applications for our inks and our tools in various markets. So, And in the case of, of SID, I think there's a lot of interest in moving from you know rigid glass and things like that to more flexible uh, plastic, which is also you know very durable. Uh, so that you can have a flexible display or something like that. Now, yeah, again, I've been looking around. This, this is the cool thing: the new plastic OLED, plastic LCD, plastic yeah. Uh, display. Yeah, and and you can work with them. Yeah, well, so you know, we focus a lot on conductors, but there's a lot of other things in terms of applications for the Pulse Forge. Now, the Pulse Forge is just a flash of, of of light, which heats up those materials very quickly, but for a very short period of time. You know, for things like OLEDs, I don't know, maybe it would be possible to, uh, you know, dry out solvents and things like that and cure those materials on, on plastics instead of glass where ovens are used or something like that. Um, in the case of what we have here, we have a tool which we sell and it's using inkjet to print a, uh, a silver ink. Uh, so it's just silver nanoparticles in, in dispersion. Uh, the inkjet print, we dry it and we cure it with the exact same method of what I described to you already. And um, again, we focus a lot on plastic. Um, we do some work on glass, but you know we think the future is probably in plastic, and that's plastic where is we. Plastic the way to get a, a huge volume, lower price. Exactly, brings down the price, improves the flexibility, things like that, right? And uh, but but in a device, there is a display, there is a, a processor, a PCB, a battery. Yeah. In which areas is Novacentrix? So we're focusing on conductors. Most of the customers who come to us will also bring other materials. They might bring OLEDs, they might bring um, chips and other things to bond together. But for us, we're focused on the conductors. So that's for PCB? Yeah, basically, yeah. And now there's a lot of other applications where you have, you already have a display or some assembly and you want to just add a conductive layer. And inkjet is really good for that. It doesn't contact the surface in the material. So if you're worried about dust or scratch or abrasion or something like that, you can just pass the piece underneath and add a circuit to it. So this machine is just, uh, this is for R&D? This would be considered a pilot scale machine. Now it's, it's relatively small, but every dimension can be scaled in terms of speed or width or something like that. Um, the heads, as you can see, there's three of them. You simply just add them together, right, to make it a, a larger width. So yeah, this machine is for pilot scale, but it proves the idea and all you need to do is scale it is, is in width. And then uh, with this pilot machine, you can do one layer, but uh, you have solutions to do several layers of uh, more and more complicated every year. Does it get more and more complicated? It does, it does, do? yeah. So what tends to happen is as it gets more complicated and more layers, you have more companies that get involved. So more often in that situation, we get involved with other companies who bring in additional equipment to handle additional layers. So you have a partner over there doing another layer, or what did they do those? So they actually, they do um, multiple colors, multiple layers, of course. Um, this machine is is a uh, sheet fed, uh, but similar idea, right? Printed 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 electronics, and then um, and mainly flexible plastic and, and stuff like that. So this is a big machine right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you work with them? Uh, so, How's the collaboration? Right. So we've had a couple of customers who have come up recently who are interested in using their print tool. As you can see, it's much larger. Uh, there's a lot more integration, especially when it comes to sheet-fed machines, and so they're really good at that part of it. And so what we're supplying with them is just the ink and then the curing tool. Right. It's inside. And this machine, uh, not quite yet. So it will be throughout the rest of this year and then next year as we do that project. So what you're looking at here is just their printer. But as you can imagine, there's some space over here. We add the machine, curing tools, and so on, things like that. And uh, so, uh, do you have more and more customers buying the Pulse Forges? And uh, and uh, do they all have it working? How do you get them up to uh, get stuff that works? Well, so we have, of course, laboratory tools, and we have the pilot tools, and then we have much larger industrial tools that we haven't brought to the show, but that are in installed at customer sites. Um, we've had actually quite a lot of hours on those tools running, 23 hours a day, things like that. And then you, you help them keep it running, keep it working, keep Absolutely, it better, yeah. get we, the latest, is it tend firmware to be, updates, software updates, how does it work? Well, so there's some maintenance and some, some things that go on, but for the most part, um, for those larger installations, we tend to be very close by. Actually, we've grown quite a lot in the past couple of years. We have offices around the world, you know, in China, South Korea, stuff like that. So we can be closer to those customers, especially in display. Um, 
in other applications, you know, we have, we have offices in Germany and, and throughout the U.S. as well. So we try to be relatively close to the customer in those cases. Nice. So there's going to be more and more stuff from Novocentrix. In the future, I'm looking forward to do some more videos. Yeah. Yeah, right. sure.